Hi and welcome to another WatchGeek video. In today's video we're going to do a tutorial for the module 5535 that's in this GRB100 which is the newest addition to the Gravity Master line and it features Bluetooth connectivity. Now I'll just touch on the Bluetooth functions because once you're in the app they're pretty self-explanatory. However I will cover in detail all the watch only functions so for people that don't have a phone or the ones that want to learn how to operate this watch without connecting. Now first I would like to thank Silvertime Watchstar for supplying this watch and if you want to check them out you can click in the description you can click on the link in the description. Also in the description you will find a table of content with time codes so you don't have to watch the whole thing but you can click on the time codes of the desired uh, of the desired function of the watch or part of the video just like in all my other tutorials. Now the first thing that I want to cover, like I said real fast, is the Bluetooth functions. So with this watch, once you're in the home screen and once you install the app on the phone and have Bluetooth turned on the phone, you have three types of connection. Number one is pairing, which is something that you have to do the first time to connect the watch and the phone. To do so, you press this connect button for more than two seconds and the watch is going to go to R and then once it connects, it's going to go to this Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth symbol. Now this kind of connection with the two second press is also going to be used whenever you want to use the app to make settings on the watch. Uh, to disconnect the watch, you can wait for the predetermined uh, time like 5 minutes 10 15 or you can press any other button and the watch is gonna disconnect now the second type of connection is time only so this watch will automatically connect to your phone up to four times a day to correct its time however if you just land it somewhere where the time is different or you just have your phone and the time is different than what it's on the watch by simply pressing this so don't hold it just press it it's going to initiate time only connection so the watch is going to connect to the phone uh, set the time and disconnect from the phone and the third type of connection is the phone finder so you don't have to ha you don't need to have the app running on your phone it's enough just to have uh, the, the phone to have bluetooth turned on and then while in the home screen you press and hold this for more than three seconds it's going to initiate the phone finder and your phone is going to ring at maximum volume for the, with the melody that's been selected in the app no matter even if it's on vibrate and if it's within the range and that's pretty much it when it comes to covering the app because like I said it's pretty self-explanatory and anyone used to using smartphones is going to find their way around it without any problems so now let's move on to the watch itself. Now another thing before we move on that I wanted to show you is how to do an all reset. Not an all reset but a factory default reset. This is to, uh, good to do once you have connection issues or the watch is acting funny. Now to do so while in the home screen you press and hold the adjust button to get into the adjusting mode. Once you're in the adjusting mode you use the mode button to toggle until you get to the seconds reset and once you're on the seconds reset you want to press and hold this for five seconds now I won't do it because it will reset the watch but once you hold it for five seconds the watch is going to go back to the default factory settings meaning any alarms that you had are going to be wiped out any timer countdown timer settings are all going to be cleared and you will also clear the pairing information within the watch which is very important and if you clear that pairing information in the in the app on your phone as well you should have no problems connecting the watch again by simply repeating the pairing process so this is something to use when you have like I said issues now to exit this you press the adjust button now we move on to the watch only functions the first thing that I want to show you and the one that you need to know is how to do an hands correction why because sometimes people I mean 90% of problems with analog digital G-Shocks is when people mess up the position of the hands this can be due to them accidentally getting into that and messing things up or if you do a battery change once you change the battery the watch is gonna assume it's midnight if you change the battery at any other time than midnight the hands are not gonna be okay so to check the hands all you have to do is have the time displayed digital time display here in the home screen and compare it to the hands these two need to match if they match you're okay if they don't match you have to do the hands correction now if 
by any chance the display is not showing this time but it's showing this which is the countdown to the next alarm or the calendar you simply use the adjust button to go back to the digital time now as you can see this one is okay but let's say it's not to correct the hands while in the home screen you press and hold the adjust button for more than five seconds so you have to ignore the first beep that's going to take you to the adjusting screen and wait until it gets to the hand setting screen so press and hold still hold and there now we've moved on we've, we've moved into the hand setting screen and now by using as you can see the screen says that we are setting up the seconds hand and now you can move backwards and forwards with these two buttons once you align the everything you need to align all the hands to 12 so once you've aligned the seconds to 12 you press the mode button so the next one is the sub dial and as you can see it just moved to zero and again you can move it forwards and backwards with these two buttons once you've aligned that you press the mode button again and it's going to now ask you for the hour and minute hand and as you can see they should point at midnight if the watch stops at midnight you're okay if they uh, move anywhere other than midnight in this position you need to correct them again using these two buttons you can correct them in either side you can also do the speed scrolling by holding pressing and holding and they're going to start spinning until you stop them by pressing any one of these buttons and you can go backwards like so once you've aligned the hands and you you can see that they're all pointing to midnight you're happy you press the adjust button to exit the hand setting mode and go back to the home screen like so once you do that all the hands are going to jump to their correct positions and now the watch should be okay once you've done this so checked that everything is okay and everything uh, works I mean the the analog part is the same as the digital now you can move on to setting up the time now to set up the time on this watch if you're not going to use the the phone function where you press this and it connects and adjust the time automatically you press and hold the adjust button and release it after the first beep there so now the watch has entered the adjusting screen the first thing that the watch is going to ask you is what your home time is and this is something you have to do correctly otherwise all the world time functions all the world time zones in the world time function are going to be incorrect now you have to select your appropriate time zone people a lot of times ask me in the comment section my city is not here of course it's not here because there are so many cities in the world it's impossible to fit them all but you just have to find the city that is in your time zone so Paris is for me I'm in Slavonsky Brod which is south of Zagreb which is nowhere near Paris but it's in the same time zone so I can select Paris you select it by using these two buttons so you can go due east and due west once you've selected your home time zone you press the mode button and it's gonna move you to the DST or daylight savings time so this is the summertime and winter time you can leave it at auto where the watch is going to connect to your phone and then turn on or off accordingly or you can manually set it up by pressing this button so you can go to off to on or back to auto since currently we have summertime in Croatia I will leave it at on or I can leave it at auto and the watch once it connects to my phone it's gonna be okay pressing the mode button again takes us to the seconds and now if you remember while in this screen by pressing and holding this you could do the all reset however if you press this button you're just gonna reset the seconds and if you reset them before 30 seconds so between 1 uh, 0 and 29 the seconds are gonna reset but the minutes are gonna stay unchanged however if you reset them after 30 seconds so from 30 to 59 the seconds are gonna reset but the minutes are gonna move by one up so now we'll just wait 30 seconds so I can show you what I mean 29 30 okay now when we set it with this you will see that the 22 minutes is gonna jump to 23 like so now if I reset it now because it's before 30 seconds once I reset it the minutes stay unchanged then we press the mode button and the watch is gonna ask us for the hours again you can go up you can go down and you can also speed scroll so now let's put it back to 21 pressing the mode mode button takes you to the minutes so again you can go up you can go down and you can speed scroll let's move it to 10 
pressing the mode button again asks you for the year. Again, up and down, so everything the same. Pressing the mode button again asks you for the month. Again, the same, up, down. And it asks you for the date. Again, up and down. Day of the week is calculated automatically, so the watch is not going to ask you for that. Now, pressing the mode button again is going to ask you whether you want the digital display to be a 12-hour display or a 24-hour display. So, whether you want the AM, PM indicator or the military time. We'll leave it like this and you toggle it with the lower button. Pressing the mode again asks you whether you want, what kind of format you want for the date. So, you want year, month, date or you want year, date, month month, date, year, date, month, year. This is the European system, so we'll leave it at this. Pressing the mode button again, it asks you for the language of the day. And this one has English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, and Russian. We'll leave it back to English. Pressing the mode again, it asks you whether you want the watch to make noise, make sound when you press the buttons, or you want it muted where it doesn't make any sound. Let's put it back to regular. Pressing the mode button again asks you for the auto light. So now here you can turn on the auto light and we'll leave it on so I can show you how it works. Now the auto light means that once you put the watch level and tilt it to your face, the face is going to light up. Since this is a solar watch, once you turn it on, it's going to uh, stay on indefinitely because the watch knows when it's in the dark. So it's not going to turn it on unless it's necessary. Pressing the mode again asks you for the light duration. If you leave it at 3, the light is going to be on for 3 seconds after you press the button. If you put it to 1, it's going to be on for 1 and a half. We'll leave it at 3. Pressing the mode button again is going to ask you whether you want the watch to receive the data from the phone 4 times a day or you want to turn that off. Since this watch is not paired to the phone, it can only stay at off. Once you pair it with a, with a phone, you're going to have the option to toggle it on or off with the lower button. Okay, moving on. Pressing the mode button again, it's going to ask you whether you want the power save function on or off. Now you can again toggle it like this, and once the power save is on, the screen is going to shut down during the night between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Now this is level one. Uh, level 1 power save. If you leave it in the dark for another, I believe, week, it's going to go to level 2, where everything is going to shut down on the watch except internal timekeeping. And then once you put it into the light, the watch is going to resume normal operation. Okay, moving on. As you can see, the watch just jumped back to the home time selection. So if you missed anything or you messed something up and you want to correct it, you simply cycle with the mode button until you get back to the desired setting. Once you've set up everything and you're pleased to exit the adjusting screen, you press the adjust button and the watch is going to go back to the home screen. And that's pretty much it when it comes to setting up the watch. Now, like I said, in this home screen, if you press this button, you're going to toggle between the uh, dates, um, uh, month and day of the week. You're going to toggle between the digital time, which is reflecting this time and you can toggle between how much time you have before the first alarm. And this always counts down to the next uh, closest alarm, whether it's turned on or off. So it doesn't matter. So this is how you, when you use this button. Like I said, this button will show you once you're in the calendar or in the digital time, if you press it, it's going to show you what time zone is currently your home, your home time. If you put it to the countdown, where it's counting down to the alarm, it's going to tell you which alarm is the closest. So in this case, it's the alarm 1. Uh, pressing and holding, like I said, is going to activate the phone finder. That's it when it comes to the home time. Now, another thing that I wanted to mention is, as you can see, while in the home time, this little needle is going to show you the battery status between empty and full. However, once the alarm gets under 30 minutes under 30 minutes so it's between 30 minutes and zero before the next alarm whether it's turned on or off this little needle is going to jump to 30 and it's going to count down the last 30 minutes to the first available alarm to the closest alarm so that's just a little quirk that i actually like okay that's it when it comes to the home screen okay so the first function that we're going to cover is the world time once you're in the world time, using these two buttons, you can move east, 
and you can move west. Once you get to a longer name, as you can see, the watch is going to write the full name of the city. Now, as a shortcut to UTC, by pressing these two buttons, the watch is going to jump back to UTC no matter where you are. Once you select a time zone that you want to view, let's say this, let's say Dubai, this is going to be your world time and the analog hands are going to keep showing your home time. Now, once you're in the world time, pressing and holding the adjust button is going to ask you whether you want the DST setting or the daylight savings time for that time zone to be at auto, meaning that it's going to pick up its data from the phone, whether you want to turn it off manually and turn it on manually. So let's go back to auto. Now, this watch stores up to, I believe, 39 cities. However, once you connect it to the app, it can have access to up to 300 cities. And the ones that you select in the app are going to be displayed here, which is pretty cool. Now, once you've set up the DST for this time zone, there is another thing that this world time function can do, and that's a time swap function. Meaning if you travel, let's say you start from Paris where it's 9.15 and you want to go to Dubai where it's 11.12. Once you get to Dubai, you want to view the local time there on this on these big easy to read analog hands. However, you still want to keep track of your Paris time, but you want it to move here. Now you don't have to manually set everything, but you can do a uh, time swap function. To do the time swap, you press the light button and the adjust at the same time. And there. And now these two time zones have swapped. As you can see, Paris has been moved to the digital screen showing 2113 and Dubai time has been moved to the big to the big hands for easy reading. Once you travel back, you simply repeat the process. So you press the light and the adjust at the same time. Light, adjust, and they're gonna swap back. So this is a pretty cool function for frequent travelers or those that work with businesses abroad. So you have to keep track of two time zones. Okay, moving on. The next function is the stopwatch. Now this watch has a 24 hour stopwatch that measures down to one one thousand of a second and it's a pretty straightforward stopwatch. So you can start it, you can stop it, you can reset it. It can do split times as well. So you can start it, pressing the reset button while the stopwatch is running is gonna freeze the screen, but the stopwatch keeps running in the background. To unfreeze the screen, you press the reset again and it can also do the first and second place. So if you have two runners, when the first one goes through the finish line, you press the reset button, which is gonna freeze the screen so you can write down the data. Once the second one passes through the finish line, you press the stop button. And now once you've written the time of the first runner, you press the reset button. It's gonna display the time of the second runner and pressing it again is gonna reset the stopwatch. And that's pretty much it. Okay, moving on. The next function is the countdown timer. This watch has a 24 hour countdown timer settable down to the second. So again, if you start it at zero, it's gonna start counting down from 24 and it's even gonna display the tenths of seconds. Once it reaches zero, it's gonna start beeping. Okay, we can stop it, we can reset it. And like I said, we can set it up down to the second. So to set it up, you press and hold the adjust button and now the watch is gonna ask you the hours and you can move up, you can move down. Pressing the mode button is gonna ask you for the minutes. Again, up, down, and moving again asks you for the seconds. So let's let's put it for five seconds. Once you've set up the, the timer to the, to the desired time, you press the adjust button to exit the adjusting screen. And now again, pressing the start button, you can start it. Once it reaches zero, it's gonna start beeping. And that's pretty much it. Pressing any of the buttons is going to stop the beeping or you can let it run down, I believe, for 10 seconds. Next function is the alarm. Now, this watch comes with five alarms and to cycle through the alarms, you use the lower button. So this is alarm one and the status is off. Moving on, alarm two, set up for midnight, status off. Alarm three, alarm four, alarm five, and you have the hourly chime or the signal. Now to turn any of these on, including alarms or the hourly chime, you once you select the alarm you want to turn off, so let's say alarm 2, you press the reset button and now it's going to be turned on. Once you have at least one of the alarms turned on, so any one of them, you're going to have this ALM display right here. 
To turn it off, you again press the reset button. If you turn on the hourly chime, the signal, by using this same button, it's going to display SIG right here. And now the watch is going to beep every hour. Okay, let's move on to the alarm one. And naturally, you can set up the alarm to any desired time, each one of these five. To do so, you press and hold the adjust button. And please note that even when the alarm is turned off, as soon as you start adjusting it by pressing and holding the adjust button, it's going to automatically turn on. So let's do it. And now the watch is going to ask you what the hours are that you want to set the alarm for. So let's select, I don't know, 21. And the minutes, let's put it to, I don't know, 2140. Like so. Now, like I said, this watch has something new, which is actually something old, and that's a scheduled alarm. So once you've adjusted the hours and the minutes, pressing the mode button again is going to ask you what what type of the alarm you want and you toggle it with this button. The default setting is a daily alarm, meaning that it's going to go off every day at the time that you've set. However, you can also toggle it to a one-time alarm. So it's going to uh, ring today and that's it. And you can also make a scheduled alarm. So once you're in the scheduled alarm, you can tell it what year, month and date you want the alarm to ring. So once you once you select the scheduled alarm, you have to press the adjust button again. And now the watch is going to ask you what year you want the alarm to be set for. And you can go backwards and forwards. Now, I don't know why they included 1900 and all the way to 2099. I mean, 2099 kind of makes, makes sense, but this doesn't. Anyways, if you set the watch like this, so let's say you select the year, but you leave the date and month empty, the watch is going to act as a daily alarm for the whole duration of the year 2098 in this case. Also, now if you press the mode button and the watch asks you for the month, you select one of these months so you can go up and down. So if we leave it like this, the watch is going to be a daily alarm only during the December of 2098. If we select the date as well, the watch is going to ring only once at December 2nd, 2098. Also, if we leave the date and month uh, like this, but we put the year to hyphens, now we just created a yearly alarm. So this is going to go off every year on December 2nd at 2140 uh, or whatever we set it up for. So this can be used for anniversaries, birthdays and whatnots. And you can set all five alarms like this. Also, if we put the month to hyphens, now the watch is going to ring at 2140 every second of every month of every year. And finally, if we put the date at hyphens, but we put the month to, let's say, 12, now the watch is going to have a daily alarm at 20, 2140 every year during the month of December. So I hope this is clear. Now, the cool thing about this alarm is when you set it up for a year, let's say 2098, and once you press the adjust button, it's actually going to tell you how many days you have left until the alarm rings, which is pretty cool, especially if you want to set up for a certain anniversary or some event, it's actually going to count down the days until you reach it. So a pretty cool function. Another thing is if we set it up, let's say we leave the time, but we change the schedule, we put it like this. Okay, and now we exit the adjusting mode. As soon as the alarm is within 30 minutes, so within its last 30 minutes, this little hand right here is going to switch from showing the battery level until uh, to counting down the last 30 minutes until the alarm. And this is it's going to be doing this even in the home screen, regardless of the alarm being turned on or off. So if I turn the alarm off, the hand still displays this. Even if I go back to the home screen, and you can go to the home screen from any function by pressing and holding the mode button, as you can see, the watch is counting down until this first alarm, and this hand is still counting down. So pretty cool feature. Now, because once this reaches zero, even with the alarm turned off, it's automatically going to start counting down until the next alarm. 
So this basically means that you can have up to five consecutive countdown timers for each day, which is pretty cool. You can use it for interval training or anything else you want. You just have to range it through the alarms. It's a bit more complicated, but it gives an additional functionality of this watch. I also told you at the beginning of the video that I'm going to show you how the auto light works. So the way it works is you put the watch level and tilt it to your face and the face is going to light up. Now as you can see it didn't light up right now because this is a solar watch so it can sense when it's not in the dark. So now it didn't work however if we turn off the lights and repeat the process so put a level and tilt it as you can see the, the light just lit up. So let's repeat it put it level tilt it and there. So this is how the auto light works. Another thing I forgot to mention is the hand shift function. Now this watch can have an automatic hand shift function and manual hand shift function. The automatic one initiates every time when you're setting anything up. So if you noticed once I'm setting up the time, the alarm or the countdown timer, the hands are going to move away. The hour and minute hand are going to move away so that they don't obscure the digital display. Once you set up everything, once you exit the adjusting screen, they're going to resume operation. However, you can also initiate a manual hand shift by pressing the light button and then while holding the light button, you press the mode button. This is also going to make the hands move and you're going to have this HND symbol blinking here. Now, once in the manual hand shift mode, the hands are going to stay like this for 60 minutes, so one hour or until you cancel them by pressing this again. This is pretty useful when you don't want the hands to obscure your view of the digital, digital screen while you're using the stopwatch or countdown timer. Well, this pretty much covers the whole tutorial for the watch only functions. Like I said, the app is pretty self-explanatory, so I don't want to touch on it, unless, uh, except for the things that I said at the beginning. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe by pressing this button right here. And until the next video, bye.